today's video I wanted to talk about a feature that's part of our virtualization station application uh, when you're running um, our QTS operating system. Um, so within virtualization station, if I open that up, we do have a feature here that says assigned to QVM. Um, so you should see down here I do have one assigned to QVM and the button's highlighted over here. You can add and remove it as you need to. Um, so if you've got a virtual machine added into your um, virtualization station software, um, if your NAS has a HDMI output on the back, it does allow you to assign the virtual machine so that you can access it from the HDMI output. Um, if you pair that with a, a monitor connected to that HDMI and a USB keyboard or mouse plugged into some spare USB ports on your NAS, it means that anybody um, is able to use that virtual machine effectively natively directly off um, the back of the NAS. You don't have to remotely connect into it or have another computer so you can remote desktop in or, or VNC in or anything like that. You're able to use it natively. Um, some great applications for this is I actually do this uh, for, for my five-year-old child. So if she was to ever uh, you know, need to do something for school, um, the, the, the Roblox thing or Minecraft thing that they do. Um, she's able to do that directly from a, a, a virtual machine that I've set up. Um, and all I've had to invest in really is a USB keyboard and mouse. Um, I have the USB output to the uh, TV in the living room so that she's able to um, access it directly from there. Now, one of the best things about it being a virtual machine is that you're able to snapshot the virtual machine. So if she was to do something wrong in there or break the operating system, um, install something that I didn't want installed, um, you're able to just uh, flash the virtual machine back to a different state. Uh, so right now I've got three separate uh, options. So right now I've got it on the Windows 11 Firefox one. Um, so if I was to boot this virtual machine up, um, so I'll just hit the start button and I'll go in and have a look. So right now I'm going to access it just the sort of normal way through the, uh, the web browser. Um, but what I will show you as well is at the same time, it's also going to be accessing it from the HDMI output as well. So over here, I've got a VNC connection, which is showing the HDMI output of the NAS. So here, if I open up um, QVM, so I'm just doing it in a web browser here simply because I don't have a way to capture the HDMI output any other way. But here's the, the virtual machine um, running on the HDMI output. It is uh, running windowed on that HDMI output. So what you can do is if you hover up to the top center, you can leave full screen, um, change some different options up here for different key combinations, or you can quit out of it as well. So if you were to quit out, it's going to go back to the, uh, the HDMI output. Um, but just to illustrate how it's working with the virtual machine running in the background. So with this one running here, so if I go across and I quit out, I'm back to the main screen. If I go back into the virtual machine and I say open up Firefox, for example, so we'll open that up. There it is up and running. If I go across to the uh, output here, if I open it back up, it's going to now show you that I've, I've I've got the Firefox application open. So again, same here. If I was to close Firefox down and go to the top again and quit back to the main desktop, if I go back to the other screen, we can see Firefox has closed. So this is a way that I can both uh, look at the virtual machine. So that, let's say monitor what my daughter's doing if I want to from another computer. Uh, but at the same time, she's able to, to use it directly. But as I say, what we're seeing here is we've got um, uh, an installation of Windows, a fresh install. And this one, I've got Firefox installed. So this is just to illustrate how the snapshots are working. Uh, so if I was to come down here and uh, power off the VM, let's go to the shutdown option. So we'll just go back to the uh, the main interface here. We'll wait for this green light to, to turn off to tell me that the machine has uh, shut down. And then we'll go into the Manage Snapshots option. So that one had the uh, Windows 11 with Firefox running on it. Um, so if my daughter was in there and had broken it, something, you know, installed something that I didn't want, or perhaps even got a virus or something within Windows, um, what I'm able to do is click on this little camera icon, go to Manage Snapshots, and I can go back and restore it back to the Windows 11 Firefox if I want. Um, or the way I use it is for testing purposes. So I've got an install with Firefox and I've got an install with Chrome. So here I can just hit the revert option. It says, do you really want to revert it? I'm going to say OK. So that's done instantly. It's, it's so fast. It's already finished. So now I'm going to power up that virtual machine. But this time, powering up the virtual machine, um, it's not going to have um, Firefox installed. It's going to have Chrome installed instead. So if I just log back into this uh, virtual machine here. Oh, perhaps if you type the password correctly. 
So now we've got Google Chrome instead. So that's just a, an easy way for you to get back up and running in, in different scenarios. Or maybe I didn't want any uh, browsers installed so I could shut the virtual machine down again. Um, and this time I could go back to the complete fresh install. Windows has finished the wizard. Um, it's completed its uh, automatic updates. So it's a completely uh, blank install. So if I just close out of this and go back to the manage snapshots again, I've got the Windows 11 new install. So here, if I go and revert that one back, go back to the uh, virtual machine, power that one back on. But this time when I when I boot this machine up, this one won't have uh, Firefox, it won't have Chrome, it won't have anything on it. It's a completely fresh install of, uh, of Windows 11. So let's have a look here. So now Chrome's not installed. The only web browser is Microsoft Edge. Um, so this is a completely fresh setup. So if you're wanting to do um, any sort of testing, trialing a bit of software, perhaps something like that. This is a really good way to do that. And absolutely everything that you do here is also uh, able to be done uh, through the uh, HDMI output of the NAS. So again, if I shut down that virtual machine, I go back to the uh, main screen. So I'm going to go to the HDMI output once it's powered down. And I'll show you how you would interact with it from there. So that one's now powered off. So here on the HDMI output, you know, you can navigate around the screen just by using your cursor keys if you want to. So I can highlight the Windows 11 virtual machine and I can push enter on it. Um, I can make it boot up. It's going to automatically start launching here and it's going to boot Windows. Um, so this is without me even doing anything in the remote interface. And if you've got the USB keyboard or mouse hooked up, uh, you're able to interact with it directly straight from the HDMI output. So it's a really cool feature. I don't think a lot of people know about it. Um, but it's really good for a certain type of application. So again, paired with the snapshot feature with our virtual machines, uh, you're able to protect what's going on. Um, but a really useful application is just uh, maybe a first computer for uh, somebody learning how to use them, um, somebody quite inexperienced. You know, they might do something that might break. But uh, the cool thing here is that you can be in control of it and uh, snapshot it so that it's in a perfect state. Um, in terms of if somebody was to save some data in here, for example, you could map the network folder here for uh, like my documents or something like that. You can map them across to a network share on the QNAP so that even if you do restore the snapshot, um, any data that the person has saved um, in the documents folder, that's persistent because that's on the NAS. The only thing you're uh, resetting with each snapshot is the state of the operating system rather than the data within it. Uh, obviously, if they save something here on the desktop, um, reverting the snapshot would, would lose that data, but uh, it's, a, it's a good way to, to, to keep the state of the operating system in a, in a good working order. Um, so what I typically do is I, I take a snapshot when I've done a fresh install um, and then every couple of weeks I will take a new snapshot of a freshly booted um, operating system so that any updates that have happened uh, uh, since my last snapshot, my snapshot has been refreshed with all the latest Windows updates, Office updates, things like that, uh, so that it's not going to keep prompting for those. Um, so yeah, here in this interface you can completely control it. Um, just as you would a, a normal PC that you're interacting with. So again, you can go um, up to the top center of the screen and exit the um, uh, the interface as well, if you wish. Um, so yeah, that's uh, called QVM. And at any point you can choose to um, activate or deactivate it simply just by clicking this button um, in, the, uh, uh, in the virtualization station interface here. So that if you don't want it to be assigned to QVM, you can untick that, it's gone away. If I go back to the um, the output there of the, the HDMI. So I shouldn't have closed that there. So if I just open that back up, we can see that the Windows machine has now gone away from that option. Whereas if I uh, go back to the uh, virtualization station and tick that box again, um, it's going to put it back so that you can choose uh, when um, a machine can, can have access there. I believe you can have up to three separate virtual machines all appearing here at once. You can obviously only interact with one at a time, uh, but it's a really cool feature um, for you to be able to, to access the virtual machine um, directly from the NAS without needing to remotely connect into it. Um, if anybody has any questions, please do let us know in the comments section down below. Again, all you need for this to work is virtualization installed on an Intel or AMD based NAS uh, running QTS um, and you should be able to, uh, uh, to, to use this feature. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.